Welcome to another installment in a series of videos on Tanakh published by Yeshiva University, Tar Mitzion, Beit Midrash, Zichron Dov of Toronto, in advance of our Tanakh in a Day program to be held on December 24th, 2017. This video is on the Book of Eov, and this video is sponsored by Nathan Kirsch, in loving memory of his parents, Rachel Bat Mordechai, Zichron Olav and Yehuda Pesach Ben Naftali Akoein, Zichron Olav So we're going to talk about Eov for the next few minutes, Eov also known, of course, as Job. A uh, basic outline of the book. Uh, the book begins with Eov described as a wonderful, righteous human being, the best one on the planet, in fact. Uh, he also has great wealth, he also has a large family, and they all get along. All of his children eat their meals together, they host each other in their, in their homes, and every week, at the end of a cycle of hosting them, uh, hosting their siblings in their homes, uh, Eov brings karbanot, he brings offerings on their behalf with their participation, uh, just in case they might have, in the course of the festivities, had some kind of a thought against God. So Eov is depicted as a person who is righteous, who is concerned for the righteousness of others, who is very concerned even about one's thoughts. And he has great wealth and he has a wonderful family. Well, scene shifts, and we're told that there is a convocation of some kind. Various celestial beings are getting together with God, and Satan arrives among them. We'll talk more about Satan towards the end of this video. But Satan arrives and claims that business is good. Wherever he goes, he is welcome. Uh, he can go anywhere on earth because fundamentally people are not really loyal to God. God takes up the challenge and he says, I will prove to you that people are loyal. Look at Eov. Eov is loyal to me. Satan says, sure, because you bought his loyalty. He has everything he could ask for. Take away his wealth. Take away his family. See what happens then. And God says, you're on. We're going to prove that human beings are in fact worthy. And so Satan goes and takes away Eov's children and takes away Eov's wealth. As far as Eov is concerned, he thinks his children are dead, uh, his, uh, his wealth is all gone, it's been stolen, burned in a fire, and he has nothing. And he grieves, however, he declares, I don't own anything anyway. Everything I have, God gave to me, God has the right to take it away as well. Satan comes back to God, God says, see? And Satan says, yeah, but that's because you didn't let me hurt him personally, physically. Let me do that. And God licenses Satan this time to harm Eov with boils. And Eov again grieves, and he is miserable. And yet he remains loyal to God, even as his wife says to him that he should blaspheme against God and die. Those are her words. Uh, Eov still insists that he is loyal to God. Then we encounter the bulk of the book. Eov is visited by three friends, and they do seem to be friends at the start of the book. They live very far away, but they hear of what has happened to Eov, and they come to grieve with him. They're there. They visit. They're, they're silent for seven days. And then they launch into attempts to convince Eov that somehow this must be from God. Whatever he is suffering must be coming from God as a response in some way to his behavior or to something that is expected of him. God is doing this, and Eov, it is, it is either a punishment or it's a test, but fundamentally it's, uh, it, 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 this is intended by God, and Eov cannot accept that. And they trade speeches. So the first friend, Eliphaz, speaks, and then Eov responds. And then the next one, Bildad, speaks, and Eov responds. And so far speaks, and Eov responds. And you go through three rounds of this, except that so far the last one doesn't speak in the last round. And as the rounds go on, the speakers become more invested in their arguments and stronger in their expression of their arguments, so that the speakers are more harsh in their condemnation of Eov, their suggestion that he must have sinned and that he is sinning by refusing to accept what God has done. And Eov, for his part, becomes stronger in his insistence that not only are his friends wrong, but that God is wrong, that either God is allowing the universe to run on its own, or worse, perhaps, that, uh, that God is actually guilty of villainy against him. And and so what begins as a trial of humanity actually turns into a trial of God as the, uh, as the book progresses. And Eov uses that terminology. He would wish God to speak to him. He wants to compel God to speak and to explain what is, what is happening. Making a long, long story short and skipping uh, yet another speaker, a fellow by the name of Elihu, uh, at the end of the book, God does speak to Eov. 
Uh, but he doesn't offer an explanation other than to say you can't understand uh, the universe and the way it runs. It's simply way beyond your abilities, way beyond your experience. Um, however, he defends Eov's righteousness. He restores Eov's family. And if you look carefully at the text in chapter 42, it seems like it's the original family being restored. Uh, in addition to which, he gives him more children. And Eov is, uh, is given great wealth as well. And the, uh, the visitors are rebuked for the way that they spoke to Eov. So that's the, that's the outline of the book in a, uh, in a nutshell. Um, who wrote this book? Well, the Talmud actually has a discussion of this, uh, of this question, offers the idea perhaps that it was written by none other than Moshe Rabbeinu based on certain words that are used in the text. Uh, others argue that it's put into writing in its final form sometime right before the first temple is destroyed before the Jews are exiled to Bavel, to Babylon, or during the, uh, the Babylonian uh, exile. Um, we're going to have to talk about that when we have our class on the book it is part of our Tanakh in a Day program on December 24th. We'll also need to discuss the question of whether this book is meant as a parable or a record of uh, actual events. Um, the messages of the book are many, but three primary messages, well, the trial of, uh, of humanity, is a human being going to stop seeking God uh, if he finds out that his good deeds are not rewarded? Um, second, the difficulty of trying to, to mind-read God by observing uh, that which happens in, uh, in our world, um, and the danger of, uh, of judging other, uh, other human beings as God rebukes the visitors uh, for their arrogance. Um, how does the writer convey the messages? Well, I want to come back here to the Satan in the beginning of the story for one example. The figure of this Satan who argues that, that human beings are, are unworthy. You know, the, uh, the read of the Dat Mikra edition of Tanakh, which I think is a compelling read, um, is that Satan is claiming that human beings are evil and that human beings are unworthy and that he can uh, get, as I said in the beginning, he can, he can, uh, he can market his wares, so to speak, among human beings anywhere uh, around the world. Um, the, if you look in Tanakh, you find that Satan shows up as an individual, as an active being uh, here, as well as with Yehoshua Kohen Gadol from the beginning of the Second Temple, as well as with King David. Uh, and in all three cases, Satan is attempting to make the argument that the figure he is uh, acting against is unworthy of something. And that's what's going on here. And so Satan presents an existential threat. Should there be human beings at all? And God responds by presenting Eov as an example of somebody who is good. So that the, uh, this is a, really about an attack on humanity and humanity's worth. And I think that's the, the, the figure of the Satan here is really meant to, to convey the argument that human beings are not worthy and God is the defender of humanity and Eov is the, uh, is the one who will prove that God, that God, in fact, is correct. There is much, much more to say about this book. Uh, I hope you'll join us on Sunday, December 24th uh, here in Toronto. And the details are at uh, www.torontotorah.com sorry, www.torontotorah.com slash Tanach, T-A-N-A-C-H. And on the flyer, that should show up in this video shortly. Thank you very much.